Rafael Imperial and his endeavors made global headlines for the first time in 2016. Prior to this, in 2002, the Italian police discovered two paintings belonging to Van Gogh in a small house near Naples, which was said to belong to Imperial. A manhunt was conducted, and Imperial, the second most wanted criminal at the time, was apprehended in Dubai, and this did not fail to make the news. The Camorra-connected Italian mobster, who was a former member of the so-called Super Cartel, with Daniel Kinahan, the Dutch-Moroccan Mokro Mafia led by Ridwan Tachi and Eden Gakanin of the Balkan Cartel. Raphael had been on the government's radar for quite a while due to his involvement in large-scale drug trafficking across multiple nations. In the early 90s, Imperial laid a solid foundation for his criminal life and did an excellent job of concealing it from the public, pretending to use legal means. Raphael had an older brother who died in 1996 and left him a coffee shop in Amsterdam called Rockland, and this opened a window for his criminal career. He started to sell drugs in small quantities before going large scale with Rick van der Bunt, a Dutch drug dealer. In the late 1990s, he was introduced to Ilio Amato, brother of Rafael Amato, one of the Camorra de Lauro clan's top cocaine traffickers, by Antonio Orofique, a Mocchio clan member. During those years, Imperial began to earn millions of euros and became the referee of De Lauro's organization, dealing directly with the drug trafficking cartels in Peru, Ecuador and Colombia. Later, there was a split of the Sisonisti de Secondiliano from the De Lauro clan, and Rafael decided to ally with the Sisonisti. During the feud, he reportedly supplied the clan with weapons, a position that he allegedly maintained up to his arrest. According to the testimonies of other arrested clan members, Rafael was not a broker who acted independently, but was actually a full member of the organization. In January 2016, the Interior Ministry of Italy issued a warrant for his arrest for international drug trafficking as part of organized crime activity, but Rafael moved from Amsterdam to Madrid, then finally settled in the UAE, Dubai. According to the authorities, he continued his criminal dealings from there and was spending 400,000 euros a month to maintain his lavish lifestyle. He just couldn't live a low-profile status. Two journalists, Kun Foscale and Stan de Jong, studied Imperial to an extent and were able to decipher how he ascended in his crime career. They made this information known to the public through their book titled Mafia Paradise, which was released in 2017. Imperial dabbled in trading wine and mineral water before going into drugs. Surprisingly, his restaurant in Amsterdam received a rating of 9 from Johannes van Damme, a culinary critic at the time. In 2016, when the manhunt for Imperial was at its peak and the Van Gogh paintings were found, he wrote a confession to the judiciary to water down the investigation which was passed through his lawyer. In October of that same year, La Repubblica, an Italian newspaper, released his statement, which pointed out his desire to offer his assets for the benefit of the community, consisting of cars, lands, and even houses. Raphael's lawyer also pointed out that he had paid 5 million euros for the confiscated paintings. Raphael then moved to Dubai with his family and was a bit safe there because there was no extradition treaty. At the beginning of 2022, he switched confessions, mentioning that he was innocent and had nothing to do with the stolen paintings. He claimed that Dutch thieves offered him the paintings and he complied because he liked them. However, the Dutch police kept Imperial under their radar. They announced their suspicion of him entering into another business with two men, Richard El Rico, the Chilean Regalme, and Ridoan Tachi. The collaboration would be visible through decrypted PGP messages. Among other things, they talked about the price of cocaine and transportation. In January 2021, authorities in the United Arab Emirates turned down a request for his extradition by Italian authorities. However, at the trial of a notorious criminal, Rico the Chilean, in March, further evidence came to light about the links between Rafael and the Kinahan cartel. The law started cracking down harder on Rafael after the trial of El Rico. Judges heard briefly from the prosecution how Kinahan was a regular contact of Rico and he was seen in a video on the phone seized from him following his arrest and extradition. The Kinahan Cartel The Kinahan Cartel is a well-known organization involved in the international trafficking of drugs and firearms, and police have been trying to take down the syndicate for years. Founded by Christy Kinahan in the 1990s, the cartel has an extended reach into the United Kingdom, Spain, and the United Arab Emirates, where Rafael lives. Estimated reports have credited them with a wealth of up to 1 billion euro. The cartel is led by Christy Kinahan's eldest son, Daniel Kinahan, who oversees the family's criminal organization on a daily basis. He is also a resident of Dubai. 
Daniel Kinahan has run an odd social media campaign in an effort to sports wash his reputation internationally. He once worked as an advisor for Tyson Fury, and recently he's been under a lot of pressure and keeps projecting different images to make him a successful boxing promoter. This, however, hasn't stopped the DEA from keeping tabs on him. DEA documents sent to the Dutch police exposed what could be a super drug cartel headed by Daniel Kinahan, Rafael and Dutch criminal Rido Antachi and Eden Gakanin, a Bosnian drug trafficker who grew up in the Netherlands. The DEA recorded the group meeting in the Burj Al Arab Hotel in Dubai, the supposed cartel's headquarters. Their talents and connections propelled them to the top tiers of organized crime, where they had the power to thwart governments and law enforcement organizations. The DEA regards them as one of the world's 50 largest drug cartels, with a virtual monopoly of Peruvian cocaine and controllers of a third of the cocaine trade in Europe. An astonishing $23 billion worth of cocaine was reportedly brought into Europe at the height of the super cartel's influence. All the men, including Rafael, were associates of Daniel Kinahan and were guests at the Irish crime boss's 2017 wedding at the plush Burj Al Arab Hotel. 30 tons of cocaine. Imperial discusses the importation of industrial quantities of drugs in secret talks with convicted Italian drug trafficker Bruno Carbone, which were decrypted by Europol and passed on to Italian judicial authorities. Raphael urges Carbone in one of the exchanges, saying, let us try to be brave. This year, we need to produce 30 tons. It is critical that we make first before any other stress, and we may then discuss retirement. We've put forth a lot of effort to get here. We must not give up now. The massive cargo he was organizing was to be transported from Colombia's turbo port to Joya Tauro. However, Dubai's attitude towards criminals shifts that year. They thought they were untouchable because they could go about their business virtually unnoticed in the Emirate for years. Criminals to be handed over? Dubai, however, did not. Until Ridwan Taki. He was arrested in December 2019 and thrown on a plane to the Netherlands. In June, the Public Prosecution Service demanded life in prison for the Mokro Mafia boss. If you've been enjoying the video so far, please make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any new crime stories. Moving on. Raphael was finally arrested on the 4th of August 2021 after an extensive investigation involving Naples' organized crime squad, public prosecutor's office, financial crimes police and other state authorities. He was merely one of 36 people who were detained in the coordinated raid carried out by 300 police officers as part of the Europol operation. The arrest followed a complex investigation that identified a corrupt customs officer who allegedly altered the outcome of an X-ray scan performed on a container containing 300 kilos of cocaine. He is believed to have received a sum equivalent to 3% of the value of the illicit cargo in return. The arrest was kept a secret for two weeks until an official announcement from the Italian government. With evident delight in capturing the mobster in custody, Dubai police produced a polished film of the operation. The operation resulted in the capture of more than four tons of cocaine valued at over 800 million euros, and 46-year-old Raphael was arrested in his luxury Dubai villa while he was in the pool with his wife and four children. After being apprehended from his opulent desert hideaway, Dubai's local authorities rejected a previous request made by Italy's DDA, Anti-Mafia District Directorate, to have him extradited to Italy. A new extradition request made by the Naples Public Prosecutor and the Ministry of Justice against Imperial was accepted. Raphael was then extradited from Dubai to Italy in March 2022. Although he made an attempt to claim that the extradition to Italy was illegal and in violation of his human rights, he will likely continue to serve his time in prison until his organized crime charges are tried. The pressure of his arrest means that although Daniel Kinahan hasn't been arrested yet, Raphael's trial may provide the hardcore evidence needed to put him behind bars. This was confirmed when the United States Department of State Security made an announcement back in April offering rewards of up to 5 million US dollars under the Narcotics Rewards Program for information leading to the arrest or conviction of the Kinahan family members. The reward was offered jointly with the Garda Sishana, National Crime Agency and Drug Enforcement Operation. The Irish police force, the Garda, also stated that the Megabucks contract for information struck by the US administration is already paying off. Sources claim he is out of options and he cannot hide in Dubai forever. If the sources are to be believed, the trial of Raphael might just change everything. For a man who seems invincible and who has taken drugs and crime by the horns, he's currently in Italy behind bars as he awaits trial. That's all for this video. Whose profile would you like us to cover next? Let us know in the comments down below. 
Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more cartel and mafia videos. Thanks for watching and stay safe.